In our Ruth study, we came across a curious phrase about people meeting at a gate. What was this gate and why were there people meeting at it? I'm Samantha Corcoran and I run the site GeoLogos. I love to learn the history, the culture, and the geography behind a Bible story. In this video, we'll talk about the city gates that we read about in the Old Testament. We'll unpack the phrase sitting at the gate and we'll even see how Jesus used this phrase to make a point about the kingdom. According to author Mike Rogoff, gates in biblical Israel weren't just a doorway into the city. They were where prophets cried out and kings judged and people met. That space served as a combination of town hall, ad hoc law court, Hyde Park corner, marketplace, and park bench. Each walled town had an entrance marked with a gate, a massive stone structure with an outer gate and an inner gate for defense. The space in between these created a corridor or courtyard, depending on the size. Most had benches for seating, a perfect public space for people to gather. When you really dig into the Old Testament stories, you'll notice these little details about city gates, and here's a few that I'd love to share with you. Here's the gate at Hebron. In Genesis 23, Abraham haggled with Ephron at the gate to buy the field and cave to bury Sarah. And here's Gaza. In Judges 16, Samson just plain walked off with the gate doors still closed and locked. And here's Shiloh. In 1 Samuel 4, when the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant, Eli was sitting at the gate and fell off his chair and died when he heard the news. And then there's Mahanaim. After Absalom's death in 2 Samuel 18, David returned to his place at the gate and the people came to him. And these city gates are not unique to just Israel alone. In fact, in Esther 2, we read about the city gates in Susa, uh, in the Persian Empire, which is modern-day Iran. We read how Mordecai learned of plans to assassinate the king while sitting at the gate. And even Jesus mentions a gate. In Matthew 16, when he promises to build his church, he says that the gates of Hades shall not overcome it. An understanding of the biblical implications of gates now helps us interpret Jesus' words here. Jesus and his disciples were at Mount Hermon, standing at the physical location of the ancient Gates of Hades, the entrance to the underworld in Greek mythology, which is actually the Temple of Pan here in Caesarea Philippi. I've linked to a great video above and in the description below that gives more context to this story that's happening here in Caesarea Philippi. Dr. Michael Heiser explains that Jesus was declaring war on the demonic headquarters of the Greek world. Jesus would build his church atop the gates of hell. Jesus defeated Satan with his death, burial, and resurrection so that his people could overcome Satan and transform places like Caesarea Philippi. And today, we can transform our own neighborhoods and cities by sharing the gospel message with others at our own city gates.